This guide is developed by Rigar Australia for the Australian second-hand golf cart market. Our goal is to inform buyers and give you the best experience in golf cart ownership. General advice on what to buy. When looking at used golf carts, our advice is to start with any of the three major US brands. Those are Yamaha, Club Car and EasyGo. We suggest these three brands because they have a strong level of support, ensuring if you need parts to repair it, they are usually available. Typically the three major brands have a high level of quality, although later in this guide we will cover which models to avoid, as even the major brands have some less reliable models in their range. In short, you cannot go wrong with the major brands, even their worst models are pretty good and there are plenty of people around that know how to work on them. So where should you buy your golf cart? This is a tricky one. Buying from a dealer. What nobody in the industry wants to tell you is, almost every second-hand golf cart from a dealer is an X-Fleet golf cart. An X-Fleet golf cart isn't always a bad thing, it really depends on which golf course it's come from. Some golf courses are harder on their golf carts than others and some have better maintenance schedules than others. If you are buying a golf cart from a dealer, ask where it came from, ask about maintenance history and what has been done to refurbish it before you take delivery. The reality is, fleet work is often hard on the vehicle. Many golf courses run their golf carts like taxis and often they are abused. Bushes, shock absorbers and suspension components usually take the brunt of the hard work and will need replacing before beginning its second life, even if it's only a few years old. There are a few cases where top-level private golf courses take exceptionally good care of their golf carts but this is rare. This is why it's so important to ask the question about the golf cart's history. Golf courses usually lease or rent their golf carts for three or four years, so if it's a three or four-year-old golf cart being sold by a dealer, you can be absolutely certain it's an ex-fleet golf cart. If you are buying from a dealer, definitely ask about warranty. Buying privately. Obviously buying privately can lead to a very good or very bad experience. If you are buying from a first owner and know the history, you are probably onto a good thing. This is a rare case where you can get a second-hand golf cart that is not an X-Fleet car. In our opinion, you are better off paying a little bit more for a privately owned golf cart if you can confirm with absolute certainty that it is not an X-Fleet golf cart. If the seller doesn't know much about its history, you might want to steer clear of it. Location. This one's important. Consider local support. If you are buying a golf cart from a dealer in another region, providing support will prove difficult, even if you have a warranty. Regardless of what the dealer tells you, it won't be easy for them to look after you if they are 100 plus kilometers away from you. We always recommend buying locally from a dealer as close as possible. These smaller dealers put the time into preparing the vehicle and because they are local to the area, they simply cannot risk their reputation. Paying a little bit more from a local dealer is usually worth the extra money and if something goes wrong, you have someone local to help you. They'll also be able to do any general servicing or upgrades you want. How much should you spend? If you are buying a golf cart for a few thousand dollars, don't expect it to be reliable. A lead-acid battery set is around $2,000 just for batteries. A replacement charger is $500 or more. If you are paying $2,000 for a golf cart, it's very unlikely to be in good working order. If it's electric, you can be almost certain the batteries will need replacing. Nobody spends $2,000 on batteries a few months before selling the golf cart complete in good working order for the same price as a set of batteries. Buying an older, cheaper model is usually risky and you may spend more than the purchase price keeping it running. Our advice, get something no older than about 10 years old. Preferably less, although just remember, almost every three or four year old golf cart is one that's just come off a golf course lease. Golf carts, electric in particular, are pretty simple mechanically, buying one that is seven or eight years old but privately owned is often going to mean it's had less use than a three year old X-Fleet golf cart. Our advice is, spend a bit more than the entry level options, around $5,000 at a minimum but usually around $7,000 for something of good quality. Spending more on the vehicle up front will mean spending less maintaining it. It also means that if you want to sell it, you are going to get more money back. If you want a really nice second-hand golf cart, around 10 grand will get you a fully refurbished golf cart with lithium batteries. This might sound like a lot of money initially but lithium batteries are going to last a lot longer than lead-acid batteries and eventually save you money. 
If you are on a budget, buy either a EasyGo TXT, Club Car DS or a Yamaha G16, G19 or G22. These are all quality golf carts that although are getting older there is still plenty of support for them. The next most important consideration is batteries. If it's really cheap and you know it needs batteries immediately or soon, as long as the price is right, it could still be a good option. Replacement batteries will be expensive and you may want to look at an upgrade to lithium. You'll get a lot longer life out of the vehicle and a huge performance boost from the reduced weight. The older models do have less power than newer models so the lithium upgrade in these older ones makes a huge difference to the performance. Obviously general condition is important but if you do have to compromise, let it be in the condition of things like the seat or windscreen. Replacement seat covers or windshields are fairly inexpensive, the main thing is that it drives well. What you are looking for when test driving is smooth and quiet acceleration and seeing whether the vehicle can drive straight without your hands on the wheel. Listen for any unusual noises coming from under the golf cart while it's moving and give the brakes a good press. Stretched brake cables can mean they are very slow to come to a stop and you don't want to find this out in the moment you need to stop quickly. What to avoid? Even the three major brands are not without their less reliable models. A lot of the models mentioned here are not fundamentally bad, they just have weak points and if you can avoid them, do. Any club car with 12 volt batteries made from 2004 to 2008. The four 12 volt batteries in club cars simply didn't work as well as other 48 volt configurations. They don't have a long life and you will need to replace batteries more frequently than a club car with six 8 volt batteries. If you have a 12 volt club car, you might want to consider upgrading to lithium batteries next time you need batteries. Club cars from around 2004 to 2013 have an onboard computer which can be unreliable. Later models do not have an OBC and are a better choice. Upgrading to lithium will bypass the OBC, effectively removing it, which is a good thing. Early model Yamaha G29, around 2007. These are still a fairly good golf cart but the early models did suffer from problems with the seat base tearing very easily as well as transaxle problems which can be expensive to fix. They also use 12 volt batteries which have a short life, like the club cars. If the budget allows, try for something a little bit newer. Early model EasyGo RXV, around 2008. These were the first major golf cart to use an AC drive system rather than DC. This was a huge leap forward in efficiency but it came with its fair share of problems. Electrical failures on these models can lead to the golf cart being stuck with the brake on, making it impossible to move. You cannot push the vehicle and the rear wheels will be locked on. They also use 4x12 volt batteries. Although because the AC system is more efficient than the club car DC system, they do tend to last a bit longer. Our choice in no particular order. Yamaha Drive Series 2 from 2017 and later, addressed the problems from the earlier model and have proved to be more reliable than the earlier G29 made from 2007 to 2016. Later club cars from 2014 with Eric Charge system are usually very good. The only common problem with these is the M-Core, basically the throttle position sensor, but that's very easy to fix and a well-known problem that's easy to spot. The throttle usually only works in some positions or is jerky. Although the Precedent is the most popular model, as of 2018, the Club Car Tempo replaces the Precedent and these are now becoming available second-hand. From around 2011 the EasyGo RXV was improved with a brake release lever added so that it can be moved when power is lost. Earlier models can get stuck when there is an electric failure. The RXV got a visual refresh in late 2015, early 2016. Other older models like the Club Car DS, EasyGo TXT and Yamaha G16, G19 and G22 are all really good golf carts. They are from a time before 12 volt batteries and onboard computers which means they are more simple mechanically than later models. This is both good and bad, they are less programmable as later model golf carts offer programmable performance settings on the controller which can be adjusted by a dealer. This includes top speed, acceleration and regenerative braking, whereas later models do not offer any programming. Buying anything pre-1990s is usually a bad idea, not so much because they are not great golf carts, there just isn't a lot of parts around for them, and being around 30 years old means they have had a lot of use. What else should you ask when buying a second-hand golf cart? If it's electric, the first question you should be asking is the age of the batteries. On a lead-acid battery there is a date code you can check, 
although it can be tricky to spot. If you are buying privately and the owner says they replaced the batteries, ask them for the invoice. If you are buying a golf cart from a dealer, ask them the battery age and whether a hydrometer or discharge test has been carried out. If you do buy, ask them to put the battery's age on the invoice. Also ask to have the terms and conditions of your warranty on your invoice. Ask when it was last serviced. What was done during the service? Who serviced it and request evidence to support the service? If it's a dealer, ask who owned it before. Specifically ask if it's an X-Fleet golf cart and if it is, which golf course it came from. Has it been repaired? Some golf carts are sold by an insurance company at auction. Perhaps they were stolen or damaged during a flood or fire. Insurance companies will often write off perfectly good golf carts with minor problems that dealers can fix easily, but you still want to know. If the damage is minor and they have been repaired by an experienced professional that is willing to support the product, don't be afraid but be informed. Parts and accessories. One of the key reasons for buying a major brand like a Yamaha, EasyGo or a club car is that there is a huge level of spare parts and accessories available. This means that if you did need to repair a problem, in most cases finding the parts will be easy and affordable. If you want to improve your golf cart by adding accessories, for example a bag cover to protect your clubs, some seat covers or some alloy wheels, popular models have been tried and tested and there will be plenty of options available to you at great prices because the items are made in large volumes, ensuring the quality has been tried and tested over many years. We hope this open and honest guide to golf cart ownership is helpful. Visit riga.com.au, Australia's leading golf cart parts supplier for more resources like this.